like a normal surprise. All right, we good? Can we do this? Hey, welcome to the closing beat. Happy Monday, everybody. We can do this. Hope you had a good weekend. Did you now? I was supposed to get a haircut, did not get a haircut, so you can see how that's going there. I'm just happy to have hair up there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Welcome to The Closing Beat. We are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. I say the same thing every day. We're going to change it up. We're going to talk about the stock market today and the busy week we have ahead of us. I hope you're in for uh, paying attention this week, right? We've got a lot going on. Uh, Wine and Wealth this week, by the way, for clients. Uh, every Thursday we do a class, Wine and Wealth. I want to share things that I or us need to know about here about you. So if you're a client of Jazz, you know, we keep updated pretty, I think, pretty well with all the classes we do and emails and stuff. But what about you specifically when things change? What specifically do I need to know that maybe I can help? Maybe there's a trick. Maybe there's a tax trick or something that we can do there. So we're going to go over that on one uh, Thursday. Sorry. Uh, yes, Thursday. Uh, FinTips videos here this week. You see them rolling, man. You see them out there? They're in the bottom right-hand corner. We got some thumbnails to let you know what's going on there. Those are free. You can check them out anytime you'd like. All right. It's a big week for the markets. Did I mention that? Uh, we've got earnings from Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. Six trillion of the 35 or $6 trillion market cap of the S&P is going to report. We've got the Fed making their decision on Wednesday. They start meeting tomorrow. They're going to raise rates 0.75% or 75 basis points. Then we got the GDP numbers on Thursday, uh, which the government is already saying, oh, they don't really count. So you know it's not going to be a good number. Uh, Earnings-wise, we've got Snapchat, which kind of ruined things last week there. Killed all the momentum of what's going on there. Talked about advertisers seeing weakness uh, in ad spend there. Made everybody think that margin growth may not be as big as expected there. In other reports, we're going to find out here in the next couple of days because margin growth is fueling earnings there. We got over 150 names to report in the S&P this week. Chipotle, 3M, Coca-Cola, GE, UPS, and so many more. As for the Fed there, is all but certain, 0.75. So what do we look for? We're going to be looking for the language that they use about future hikes. That's a way to summarize that real quick. If they sound a little bit softer about high, uh, rate hikes going forward, that's going to be a rocket ship for the stock market. It's going to love it there. GDP numbers out at the end of the week, as I mentioned there. It could be the official mark at the start of the recession there. Uh, current estimates are for like 0.4% growth. But the like I said, the White House is already doing their press conferences saying, you know, these numbers maybe we don't need to uh, rely on so much. We're going to find out. All right. That's a quick summary. Let's talk about earnings because that's what's coming up here. Uh, Microsoft. Let's do this here. Let's go over the charts. All right. If you like your Microsoft, uh, they're reporting their second quarter earnings. It looks like it's trying to come out of a downtrend there. You go, oh, this is great. Microsoft's ready to go there. Uh, well, I hope so. But Q2 tends to be... Um, uh, week for them. It's their worst. Uh, if you looked at all four quarters, the second quarter would be their worst there in terms of beating on earnings, only 62% of the time there. Uh, the fourth, uh, the four quarter average is actually 80%. Uh, so it is their worst there. Um, and since going public in uh, 2001, I think it was, uh, the second quarter earnings have caused the stock to respond on earnings down 70% of the time. It's actually 69% of the time. I rounded up to make it sound scary. That's what you got going on with Microsoft. Now, Alphabet is going to report as well. It's almost exactly the same. If you look at their stats there, Q2 is the worst for them. Uh, not good. They are coming out of their split there. We'll see what happens with them this week. Amazon, it's a little bit better. Uh, the second quarter for Amazon is its second best quarter. The first quarter is always the best for Amazon. They're a retailer. Go figure. Uh, recently, though, well, first of all, you might have noticed this big gap down here. Uh, that was that 14% drop, fourth worst earnings day ever for them. Um, and recently they've they've had, well, go back four quarters. So the last four quarters, they've lowered sales and guidance numbers uh, going forward. So that's been a little bit of the roughness there for them. The bright spot, which I'm sure a lot of you own the stock, Apple. Apple's kind of the outlier there. The second quarter is strong for them they, as far as like, how often they beat on earnings and beat on revenue and everything. And the average response to whatever earnings come out for the second quarter has been a 3% gain. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. That's going to be quite a bit of attention put on a lot of very big names that can move the market one way or the other there. So we're going to take a look at that. We will see what happens uh, well, throughout the week. I mean, I, I don't even, like, I'm almost speechless. There's so much going on there. It's like, Yikes. Now, I did something special for you here. Um, 
So did I? Yeah, we got something special here for you. Here are the biggest gainers uh, in terms of their day of earnings that, that gets reported. So if it gets reported in the afternoon, it would be the next day. If it gets reported in the, er in the morning, it's that day. Who are the biggest gainers out there on uh, their earnings announcement. Bumble takes the top spot. I hope you can see that clearly there. Uh, the average one-day move is about 8.78%. Keep in mind, they only they have six reports here. So what you're looking at is the ticker symbol, the company, the date that they report. Anything shaded in blue is going to be through the end of uh, July. When they report, morning or afternoon, the number of reports, they had to have at least six reports for us to put it on this list here. We're just showing the top ones there. How often they beat on earnings, how often they beat on revenue. You know what this took? <laughs> <laughs> to put this together, uh, right? How often they beat on revenue or sales. Uh, guidance, whether they change that or not. The average gap, meaning we closed one day, started the next day, in this case, 5.7% higher. The average intraday move, so in this case for Bumble, the average gap was 5%. You missed it if you didn't trade before hours. Then during the day, it rallied even more, give you a full day performance, on average of 8.78%, which includes after hours as well. And then on the right, we've got volatility for you. Which one's the most volatile? The bigger the number, the more volatile it is in terms of dollars there. So you got Bumble, the Trade Desk, DoorDash, Airbnb are going to be some interesting ones. Uh, where was uh, Data Dogs down in here? There's some names that are maybe, uh, this is the Russell 3000 we're using, so it could be anybody. You got Insurers, you got HubSpot, Mr. Cooper, of course, GoGo, the internet company there. Pinterest and Nicola get some headlines there because of what they do. Roku, 95% beat rate, 89% on revenue there. It uh, tends to be better on earnings. We could use it. It's been beaten down quite a bit there. And Trimble. Oh, well, you can throw in a semiconductor there as well. So if you want to screenshot that or take it, if you happen to own those stocks, it's just, it's not telling you, oh my gosh, you know, things are going to, you know, be good or things are going to be bad. Just what's general? What is an average? And then if you see something different, is that odd? Yeah, if we have large gap downs on these stocks, then something's changed. If you own it, you may want to pay a little more attention to it. So I just wanted to share that with you there. Uh, oh, let's take it a step further here. Biggest one-day losers. So let's look at the bottom of the list here. Same data points, right? Everything's the same. Biggest one day, sorted from the worst down to, well, not so bad, but not great. You got Poshmark, a lot of retailers in here. Be ready for that. Retailers have been volatile, especially coming out of COVID. Uh, Fastly, Beyond Meats seems to still get some attention there. Lyft is in the news. Redfin as well. It's These numbers are probably skewed a little bit for Redfin because uh, th they've had a wild go of it lately. Uh, DraftKings is in there. I want to point out, uh, where was it? The Real Real as well. And yeah, just some of the worst ones there. Noodles & Co., of course, gets a little attention in Cloudfare. So if you're interested in that, the most volatile names are going to be your retailers in there. Look at that. Poshmark, The Real Real, Beyond Meats, of course. Uh, I don't know if that falls into real, real retail or not. But anyways, just wanted to share some of that data with you so you have something to look forward to or be scared of <laughs> coming into earnings. All right. Where do we stand here, huh? If we look at the stock markets here today, uh, well, I've got more stuff for you. I've got more stuff for you, don't I? Let's take a look here. Here's how things performed last week. We looked at all the indices going forward uh, or looking back for the week just to see how things went. So, for example, the S&P gained 2.5%. The Dow gave 2.05%. I'm just trying a different way of sharing data with you instead of just rattling off numbers. It's nice to have a visual every now and then. Your best gainer was the what's called the IJR. It's a small cap 600, a small cap S&P 600, by the way. Uh, and in second place comes the mid caps, 4.04%. Uh, now, the worst on the year is the NASDAQ, right? So down 23%. It gained back 3%, so looking good there. Uh, second worst is going to be the Russell 2000. So that's over here. Decent move. You're seeing some of that action coming in what's known as the risk on type areas, uh, which had been really just bludgeoned to death on the way down. Um, looking at the different sectors for the week, uh, last week, here's what we've got. Uh, consumer discretionary, the and I put the symbols so you could use the symbols if you want. Uh, XLY, consumer discretionary did the best. That's risk on. So remember last week, people were like, well, maybe the world's not so bad. You know, well, not too bad out there. Took risk. Consumer discretionary, the best performers there. Uh, look at materials did well. Industrials did well. The best for the year, of course, is energy. And you can see energy is trying to 
trying to give you a bounce off the 200 day like we talked about before. Communication services did okay as well. It's down the it's second worst for the year, down 27%. Uh, and consumer discretionary was third at 24%. So a decent little rally there. We'll see. I, I don't know if it keeps up this week. There's a lot of stuff moving. So we'll see how it goes. But just trying different ways to share data with you. That's all. That's all. Let's do the normal thing here. Going back over to the markets. If you look at the S&P here today, slightly lower at like 5 or 6 o'clock this morning. Then it was up a half a percent. Then it drifted back down. Then right before the close, it popped back up a little bit. Low volume, small range day. No one wants to jump ahead of the Fed, and that's okay there. We are above the 50-day moving average, though. We have spent 60 days below the blue line, the 50-day moving average. That is the longest streak of being below the 50-day since 2008. Meaning, I mean, it's not abnormal, but that's a long streak for the S&P to be doing that. About 50 days under the 50 days, the average. It's always easy to remember. Since 1945, 50 days under the 50 day is the average. It's hard to forget because it's 50 and 50, right? Now, going forward here, hmm, I believe I have some stuff for you. What happens? What happens when the S&P breaks a 50 day moving average streak, especially when it is a average or slightly above average turn, right? So we know 50 days below the 50 day moving average since 1945, is the average. We just did 60. Let's take a look here. Looking forward, we put together a little simple chart for you here. Median performance after the streak breaks, both over the one week, one month, three months, six months, and a year. And then we said, what about just a normal market? Just random, any normal market, whether it's up, down, sideways, whatever. What's the average return for the S&P over a six-month rolling time period? What's the average return over a one-year rolling time period? This is not over history. This is looking back to 1945, really the end of 1945, because that's, that's as far back as I can go. All right? So uh, one week is kind of irrelevant. One month later, the S&P outpaces itself in terms of gains. Not by much, but it outpaces itself once it breaks that streak of being under the 50-day. Over the next three months, there's not really much to go on there. Right? It's just back and forth. You'd be better off just staying in the market and not trying to buy with a hold time of three months. Just wouldn't be worth it. Uh, six months gets a little bit better, and then over a year, it proves that buying a break of a downtrend or essentially a break above the 50-day proves to outpace the normal average of the stock market there. So there you go. You can't beat the stock market. That's, there's an example of exactly how they do it. Percent positive, if we're looking at that, um, as far as the S&P being positive one month later and slightly outpacing itself 63% of the time, whereas the S&P is only normally positive 61% of the time, the three-month time period, I don't know what's going on there. I find that rather interesting that over a three-month time period, it's a little bit worse. Then it gets better as you go into the year, uh, six-month and year time frame. So uh, I know I kind of ran through a bunch of stuff here today, but I just thought I'll throw a bunch of stuff out there and see what sticks. Right. We'll just see what you like, what you don't like, what seems like hogwash. Just putting a bunch of stuff together because it's summertime. It's before the Fed earnings and GDP number. And I'm like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> what, what do we focus on? All right. Back over to the uh, old charts here. So that's the S&P. Low volume, narrow range day. Not much to go on there. You could kind of say the same about the NASDAQ, although it was a little more active here today. And that is because no one wanted to be a bull on Microsoft. No one wanted to be a bull and, and be a hero on Apple. No one wanted to be a hero in Alphabet. Same thing is true for, I got to go to Meta now, right? There you go. No one wanted to be a hero there. Uh, maybe a tornado coming or something. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, we're safe here. Don't worry. Uh, no one wanted to be a hero on Amazon, right? It doesn't make sense. Why take the risk ahead of what is typically not the best quarters for a lot of these people here, and especially with all the potential weakness that we see out there. Um, elsewhere, Chinese stocks, especially, there we go, Chinese stocks, um, not the big names. If you follow China overnight there, you notice that it, it wasn't Baidu and Alibaba. It was like Vip Shop, Pinduo Duo, JD.com. Those were the ones that had their better days here. I don't know what that is. That's probably earnings for somebody, but just something I thought I'd point out. 
Elsewhere, we got gold still sitting basically near lows there. Oil had a great day. That was one of your better performing, the best performing sector today uh, was energy. So anything related to that did well. Um, and healthcare did all right as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of rambled a little bit there. Oh, I'm going to hit that button there. Sorry, hit the wrong button. And uh, that's what we have there. Okay, stocks in the news. Let's talk about what's going on out there. There's actually a lot of news that's coming out that's kind of under the surface there. We'll start with Apple. You like your Apple? Uh, the company is going to have a, I don't know the last time they did this, a discount on iPhones. They don't discount their stuff. They're coming out with a discount there. So um, if you're looking to buy an iPhone, maybe that's the case there. You see what happens there. Hey, they're also the front runner for the um, NFL Sunday ticket. Uh, you might have to watch on Apple TV. So I don't know if that is that official over there. Do we know that yet? So. Not official. They're they're apparently in the front runnings there. There was a, a leaked article by the Washington Post, New York Times, maybe one of the big ones uh, that said that they are in in first place as far as getting the NFL Sunday ticket package. And good for them. Yeah. yeah. Do you watch Apple TV? Oh, it's on direct TV. Okay. So, all right, good for them. Uh, let's move on here. Typical Monday. Got to get organized, get your thoughts going. You know what I mean? Uh, Boeing, the union that represents their defense division uh, is working on going on strike. Uh, that'll be in just a couple days. August 1st stock was a little bit lower on that news. It was Kind of known that rumblings were out there and everything, but so be it. Uh, public storage. If you happen to own public storage, you're getting a $13.15 special dividend. They actually sold part of a property. Well, they owned a piece of a property. Uh, they sold 40% of it or something like that. They only own 40%. They sold that off. So they said, you know what? We're going to pay everybody a special dividend. They have to. It's, it's not special. They, they have to do it. Uh, $13.15, that is a monster dividend there. Uh, very, very nice. Gets paid on August 4th or 8th or something like that. So, nice. Uh, WWE, which happens to be a stock that we own there. Uh, Vince McMahon finally retiring and not on his terms either. If you happen to read the story there, uh, poor guy. I, I don't know if he's a poor guy, but initially you read it and you're like, oh, you know, he was the hype man. Uh, we happen to own the stock, so I, I will be excited for the fact that he's retired. Uh, seems like they're putting away some potential conflict by uh, asking him or seeing if he'll retire. We'll see. There's going to be a lot of drama wrapped around that, which is what they do, right? Uh, John Deere, you got an activist investor taking a bigger stake. Uh, it is Cascade Investments. They went from about a 6% stake to about a 7.5% stake. Um, maybe looking to see if they can make these things battery powered or something. Uh, that That is their MO. So I'm, I'm not picking on them. That's just, that's what they tend to do. Uh, so we will see. Uh, that's pretty much it. Tomorrow, I mentioned a whole bunch of earnings. McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Pulte Homes, Raytheon, UPS, the focus being on Visa, Microsoft, Texas Instruments, Alphabet, and UPS. It's kind of a barometer for general economic, uh, maybe a pre-GDP number that comes out. And um, I got a surprise for you, Cody. You ready? Are you going to try this? You might remember, uh, if you're one of our clients, you do remember, one of the stocks that we own is Twinkie, right? And our mid-cap fund. I'm sorry, a small-cap fund. So we own Twinkie. And I mentioned that they had a, uh, I mentioned the different products because it's Hostess Brands really is what it's called. So I mentioned a handful of different products and the old mother-in-law was paying attention. One of them was the Hostess Boost. Huh? Remember? It's the one that has, this has anywhere from 50 to 70 milligrams of caffeine in it. It's a donut with caffeine in it, and she found it and said, oh my God, I'm going to get one for you. Yep. 50 to 75 milligrams, only 300 calories for this little guy. This happens to be the caramel macchiato flavor. I mean, it's got to be disgusting. <laughs> caramel macchiato donut, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, if I eat it now, I'll be up all night, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a lightweight with the caffeine, so you never know.
But uh, they had originally sold out of those in like nine hours. By the way, they also have, uh, they launched <clears throat> Twink Coin. They did. <laughs> so they, la- they just launched it. You can, you, can, you can only buy it on one website. Uh, Twink Coin uh, to play along with the crypto thing. It's not a coin. It's literally just a Twinkie in the shape of a circle and they're calling it a coin. That might have been a mistake. Maybe just a little, the naming, the, uh, the fact that it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not embossed with like a coin symbol or on it. Nope. Just a twink coin. So <laughs> it's like, you know what a Twinkie looks like? And people are going to think we have candy everywhere, Twink, but just put it in a circle basically is what they're doing there. I don't know about that one. That one made me a little nervous, but Anyways, just thought I'd share that with you there because that was uh, something we had talked about. I'll take your questions if you have any. I should probably get out of the way. Uh, There we go. Let's see what we can do here. You're expecting Apple to lower guidance uh, with warnings moving forward. Then the markets will sell off along with it. Any thoughts? Um, Apple's clever. They're very clever how how they beat earnings. Um, So guidance is usually the focus because... They're very clever at getting to the number. It has to be a pretty big issue if they miss their number there. My preference would be, and I don't know what they say or how they cause the stock to go lower or what they attribute to it, but I would prefer to see it lower. So if you think it's going to be that, I will follow right along with you and say, great, if it pushes the stock lower, so be it. Yeah. Uh, Well, that would move the market though. You're right. Yep. You are right. Walmart updated guidance. What does it mean for this week? Uh, what does it mean? For, it just they got ahead of the number. And it wasn't, I mean, it was sort of like a warning. Uh, they don't actually call it guidance when they say that. You may have read an article that says they adjusted their guidance or something like that. It, it's really just their earnings targets. Uh, they'll have a separate guidance that goes more specific when uh, earnings come out. What, Wednesday? Thursday? Wine and Wealth and Twinkies. Yeah. <laughs> Was it tonight? Did Walmart already come out with that? Was it tonight? Oh, it was tonight. Uh, earnings are out. Yeah. Uh, trading around 120. Well, less than that now. There you go. Totally totally lowered their guidance there. Wow. All right, UPS. They got to help them out now. Uh, marketing department should have first school E. Yeah, it makes you... I mean, I don't know. They may, somebody probably said, sure, go with that name because that'll help us out. Maybe a marketing uh, thing there. I don't know. <laughs> Ashish, you feeling, you feeling bad about the market? You want it lower? Yeah. I don't blame you. I like lower markets. I mean, now, granted, we're, we have that at the moment. But you're hoping for more, huh? Cool. Well, if it's ever going to be in a week, uh, you know, this could be your week. Uh, sheesh. I think you know, right? I mean, you know better, but uh, yeah, if it's going to happen, let's go. This is the week to do it. All right. I shared a lot. I shared a lot fast. I will be back tomorrow. We're going to cover all of this and then some. We're going to focus on earnings this week because as you know, now there's a lot of it coming out there. We will see how things go. I love a busy week. Get excited by these things. So I will see you tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day or evening, and uh, thanks for watching, by the way. Yeah, enjoy.